we wake up, we scroll, we see something we never thought we even needed. And suddenly, guess what is in our cart? Not because it's even useful, but because you know what? It gave us a little dopamine hit in the middle of a stressful week. If that cycle feels familiar, then this video is for you. Overconsumption hijacks the brain's reward system. So let's start here. Our brain isn't wired to save, it's wired to survive, right? And in a consumer culture, that wiring gets hijacked. So when we scroll, shop or add to cart, the brain's reward system lights up, particularly a structure called the ventral striatum, which is activated by dopamine. This region basically helps us seek out what feels good, not necessarily what's good long term. Here's the catch. Consuming basically triggers dopamine, but so does anticipating a purchase. So this means we can be addicted to the idea of buying, not just the item itself. So one fMRI study basically found that the brain shows reward activation during product reviews even before we make a decision right psychologically this links with something called temporal discounting and this is basically our tendency to value immediate rewards more than future ones so we don't think oh how will this 40 pound spend affect my wealth next year right we think along the lines of hold on it's on sale now but those small unexamined purchases often compound into financial strain so what if our spending isn't careless but cognitive let me explain right so let's think about this if we don't understand how the brain drives impulsive consumption we're not failing we're simply unprotected and that's where change begins all right so let me unpack what i'm even talking about so we might justify a friday night takeaway with you know what i've had a long week that emotional relief does light up reward pathways however but if we pause breathe and delay we start teaching a brain to basically decouple comfort from consumption. So what's powerful is this, when we basically understand how overconsumption exploits the brain reward circuits, we're able to stop blaming ourselves, right? And start actually rewiring one conscious pause at a time. Okay, so next, here's something we don't often realize. Every decision we make basically drains our cognitive resources. And when those mental resources get depleted, we're much more likely to basically spend impulsively. So neuroscientists have basically found that the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for self-regulation, gets fatigued after repeated decision-making, right? So this fatigue is known as decision fatigue, and it basically reduces our ability to resist short-term gratification. So the more tired the brain, the more likely we are to fall for instant pleasures, right? So including spending. Now layer that on top with modern life, right? You have emails, choices, tabs, things it's no wonder we click buy now by 9 p.m so this isn't about willpower it's about energy so here's an example let's say we work all day and it's just been a long day we open our phone in the evening to relax right and we scroll we swipe and suddenly we see like a flash sale last minute our brain is too tired or maybe too tired to even evaluate whether we truly need it or not we just want a quick hit for ease so one click later our dopamine delivers right but regret often follows so how do we actually even interrupt this so do you know what we can start by automating key money habits early in the day right so like transferring to savings at 9 a.m instead of waiting till the evening and we can reduce low value decisions like what to wear or eat so we basically preserve energy for the ones that really matter ultimately the more we protect our mental energy the less we outsource our peace to impulse spending and this links so nicely to the next point which is most of our online purchases are made on autopilot so let's sit with this for a second because it's important most of our our spending isn't intentional it's automatic most of the time for most people anyways so in one large study on online shopping researchers basically found that 90 percent of purchases decisions were made without conscious evaluation which is crazy so meaning people didn't even read the descriptions compare products or even pause for a second before checking out that's how powerful cognitive ease actually is when something feels effortless the brain assumes it's right so from a neuroscience lens this this is basically linked to something called system one thinking. The brain's fast, like intuitive mode, right? So while it helps to act quickly, it also makes us more vulnerable to like subtle nudges, for example, like free shipping thresholds or countdown timers. Psychologically, this overlaps with heuristics, right? And that's the mental shortcuts we basically use to save brain effort, but brands know this. That's why the buy now, pay later button is always bigger or present somewhere or why 
are only two left, flashes in red or whatever it flashes in. It basically creates a false sense of urgency, bypassing critical thinking. So many of our choices weren't really choices at all. How sad is that? Oh my goodness. We might even open Amazon for one item and leave with five. And why? Because our brain defaulted to speed, not strategy. And over time, that muscle memory basically becomes a habit, one that erodes financial margin. Okay, so do you know what? What can we actually do? Well, we could install like a three second delay rule, which is basically before you check out, pause, breathe, and ask, hold on, is this solving a real problem or soothing a temporary mood that I'm in, for example? One thing we can even hold on to is this slowing down just enough to interrupt the autopilot is how we start spending with intention instead of instinct okay next every time we anticipate a reward dopamine rises and in the case of shopping the reward isn't even the item it's the feeling we expect to get once we've purchased the item once we are like physically holding the item neuroscientists have found that dopamine spikes most not when we receive the reward but when we actually anticipate it so that's why just seeing a sale notification or scrolling through like a wish list can really feel so addictive we're lighting up the brain's reward system again and again every time we do that so this is what's known as the dopamine loop right and while it's not inherently bad it's not it can become problematic when we keep chasing the feeling not the outcome so psychologically this basically overlaps with hedonic adaptation right and that's our tendency to quickly return to a baseline level of satisfaction after a purchase so that item we were once so excited about a few days later it's just clear but do you know what the brain craves the next high and so the loop just continues so what if we're not addicted to things right but to the emotion we hope they'll give so let's say we've had a tough day right and we scroll through i don't know zara's new in section for example we feel better not because we've bought something yet but because our brain basically anticipates a reward. But the relief is fleeting. It doesn't last long. And if we're not careful, it becomes the primary way we decide to cope. It's how do we stop it? Do you know what? We can replace dopamine specs with other reward sources. So like movement, exercise, music, or a meaningful task. So we basically start to train the brain to crave something deeper than consumption. So pretty much when we replace cheap dopamine with like sustainable joy, we don't just spend less, we feel more whole. And in saying that, you can even ask God to anchor you when the world says more. So what I basically mean is that sometimes it's not the algorithm, it's not the ad or the sale, it's the noise, right? The subtle pressure to basically upgrade our life every turn. We live in a world where overconsumption is seen and perceived as normal, right? Even necessary. But when we follow Christ, if you do follow Christ in your personal faith, we're basically called to live by a different rhythm, one of peace not pressure not conforming to like society right basically focusing more on stewardship right not status so in scripture we're reminded to keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have so this isn't about deprivation it's more about discernment so from a psychology lens this overlaps with value alignment and it's basically the degree to which our spending matches our core beliefs when we live in ways that contradict our values so it basically creates internal friction and often it could even be overconsumption is a way we try to fill that gap right but consumption will never bring the peace only God can provide and that's something to really remember and sometimes the most radical act of faith is simply saying do you know what I have enough so when we feel like that portal is spent we can just stop and ask hold on am I feeling like or forgetting that I'm already covered so let's say we see like a new skincare haul online I don't know something stirs and the urge to join in is there or to keep up right but instead of clicking at the basket we can pray we can ask God to actually anchor us to remind us that do you know what we're not missing out we have enough it's okay so my point here is that sometimes peace isn't found in purchases it's protected in pause next is about creating a financial reset routine so we reset our physical health with routines such as sleep workout meal plans right but what about our finances creating a weekly financial reset routine for example can really just anchor us emotionally and psychologically especially when we're prone to overconsumption so research shows that routines even like really simple ones give us 
process sensor control and predictability, both of which basically reduce impulsive behavior and improves emotional regulation. So when we feel grounded, we spend more but consciously. So we could open a journal or spreadsheet and take like 20 minutes, you know, once in a while and just reflect. So reflect on why did I buy this? What did I buy? And do you know what? What actually really added value? What drained my energy or finances? Or even just asking yourself, what do I even want to do with my money like next week? This isn't about guilt. It's not. It's really just about becoming aware and gently guiding ourselves back to alignment. So for example, imagine your finances as a home, right? Would we keep adding new things each week without ever cleaning, organizing or reflecting? That's what basically unchecked consumption does. But with a reset routine, we basically sweep the floors and open the windows again. So one thing we can hold on to is this. Routines don't restrict freedom. No, they protect it. A peaceful money life isn't built in one day. It's built in rhythms. Okay, so next, when we overspend, guilt often follows. But here's the twist. That guilt doesn't always stop us. It can actually make us spend more. When we feel we've done something bad, right, like spending too much, we're more likely to give ourselves permission to keep doing it, to basically cope with the discomfort we feel. So it's like a self-soothing loop and it's expensive. Cognitive dissonance theory basically explains the tension. So our brains hate the mismatch between I want to be financially responsible and I just spent £300 online again. So to basically resolve the discomfort, we either change our behavior or we justify it. Often I feel like we go with justification instead. So for example, what I've already messed up. So do you know what? I might as well keep going. This is why starting fresh on Monday is such a common trap and honestly it delays change and creates a build up or even regret so one way to interrupt this guilt loop is to basically notice it in real time right so instead of spiraling into more purchases we could try naming the emotion we're feeling then pausing so even like a two minute reset closing the laptop i don't know walking to another room can really just give our brain a new sensory input and break the pattern so realizing that guilt doesn't have to spiral into more spending so with a awareness we can basically interrupt the loop and just reclaim our peace before it costs us way more than it should okay so scarcity doesn't always mean struggle life it, it doesn't our brain reacts intensely to scarcity right whether it's time food or money the scarcity mindset activates areas involved in threat detection and urgency especially the anterior cingulate cortex so this region is sensitive to errors and unmet needs so when we basically sense we're running out of time. Our brain lights up with pressure to act fast. So the problem here is that scarcity narrows our focus, right? So studies basically show that when people feel financially constrained, their decision-making becomes short-term and impulsive. So it's like our brain becomes tunnel vision. We fixate on solving, I don't know, the immediate lack, even if it costs us more in the long run. But scarcity doesn't have to always lead to struggle. It doesn't. When we pause and expand the frame, we can actually harness scarcity to increase creativity. So for example, working with a tight budget can sometimes actually sharpen our problem solving. So as long as we're not stuck in panic mode. So one shift that really helps is replacing I can't afford that with actually that's not what I'm choosing right now. So this basically reclaims back your agency. It's like it lets us recognize limitations without letting them define us. And you know what? Over time, that language helps our brain associate scarcity with empowerment, not shame. So basically scarcity is a signal, not a sentence if we say grounded we can really respond to it with wisdom it's of urgency okay next let's be honest sometimes we believe that the next purchase will be the one that finally makes life easier sometimes some of us may think that so the planner that will organize everything the skincare that will give us confidence the course that will change our future so this belief is basically called effective forecasting bias so it's the tendency to overestimate how future purchases or how much future purchases will change how we feel. So research basically shows that we're not great at predicting what will make us happy. Can you imagine? 
or in the long term. We basically tend to anticipate a bigger mood boost than we actually get. So we buy with hope only to find ourselves let down and looking for the next thing sometimes. So this doesn't mean we stop spending completely, but do you know what? It does mean we stay honest with ourselves about what we're really seeking. Is it a solution? Is it a shortcut? A sense of control? Are we just buying something to be happy? Like what's going on? When we get to the point where we're able to name the desire underneath, like whether it's comfort, clarity or confidence, we can ask like if there are other options to meet that need sometimes writing on the emotion before buying it is just enough to slow us down not every craving needs to be fulfilled it doesn't especially not for our bank account so one thing we can hold on to is this clarity reduces consumption when we know what we're really looking for we're less likely to keep searching for it in things that won't deliver so our brains are pattern seeking machines once a habit is repeated the brain's basal ganglia starts running it on autopilot including spending habits so this is why we find ourselves opening shopping apps without even thinking or you know checking out when we're emotionally overwhelmed but here's the beauty of patterns and rewards in the brain all that stuff the brain's neuroplasticity means we can shape new pathways especially when we attach them to something deeper than just restriction purpose is a powerful override signal so when our spending aligns with a bigger goal financial freedom, peace, stewardship, whatever you want to call it, right? The brain forms new associations and starts letting go of old ones and if we're struggling we can ask christ to help us so basically in the end rewiring overconsumption isn't about deprivation it's about anchoring to something so much more meaningful so when we spend with purpose we basically finally stop feeling like we're always trying to fill a gap also something else that is really important is knowing this right before you spend on overconsumed stuff ask yourself like is that the person you you actually want to be are you just doing it because you've always done it sometimes and what is so lovely about life you can look at what you used to do as your past identity and look forward into what you want to become as your new identity okay guys i hope this video really helped you check out the description box you'll be able to see some financial well-being guides and also physical and emotional well-being guides too and i will see you in my next video bye